you know, there are, and, and, and a lot of folks, some of my Rastafari people may not really um, agree with me on, on, on one level, on a more fanatical level, that there's some brothers and sisters who are Roman Catholic who've come to the light of Rastafari. They, they grew up as Catholic or whatever like that. You understand? We have, we have some Rastafari in Italy, too. You know, and I hope they get to check this out as well. You know, we have, we have the so-called Gentile and the, and the Jew or the Judahite or the, or the white and the black or the black, the Jew and the white and the Gentile or the non-African Ethiopian, you know, who are involved in this, this um, a time of prophetic this is a time of prophetic revelation of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, we were on the, the topic of the Fitta Neges, and this will be a, a continuation part of this on the Fitta Neges. And we also had pointed out this particular article right here. Um, it's from the, the FIDES News Service, the 3rd of May, 2008, from something called the FIDES the FIDES um, dossier. Now, FIDES is a Latin way, right here, this word right here, FIDES is a Latin way of saying faith. So it's a faith dossier and speaking about the Catholic, um, the Catholic Church in Ethiopia, a brief history of evangelization, right, evangelization. We went to the first part of this, the meaning of the term Catholic, and we dealt with that in the in the previous part of it, and that we might call that the Catholic um, controversy, you know, um, the Ethiopic canon law, fits in the guest, and the Catholic controversy, because in this particular um, article right here, or this Fides dossier, as we mentioned right here, there's a couple of interesting things, and not to go over it again right here, um, but you can listen to the first part, watch the first part of it, and we kind of address um, this paragraph, this, this quote, and this portion right here, and we went to more source materials, and let's bring that up right here, um, the Law of Kings, which I think the Orthodox Church has put out this particular um, scanned um, version right here, and it's based on what um, a Head Start Frontline Books published right here. This is the cover of this particular document published right here. So let's get a let's get more of a close up on this right here. Um, get it front and center so you can see the cover for yourself. This is the Fitta Neges. Now the Fitta Neges, we know the Fitta Neges as uh, being interpreted the law of the kings or the canon um, 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 regna you understand, the canon of the kings, right? And the preface in this is by the conquering line of the tribe of Judah's imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, right? So this is, this is actually the cover that, of the book which has been um, published by Head Start and Frontline, um, Frontline Books. Now this is from an online scan, and we touched on some sections here, both the preface section um, X, uh, XVIII as well as page 19 and page 19 refers to this particular quote right here that is made and then we also dealt with what, what, what Peter are they talking about what Peter are they speaking about Peter we know was the bishop of Antioch Antioch was the first place in which the Christians um, were called Christian and there was also the Bishop of Jerusalem that was um, James, right, of James or Jacob that we have in the New Testament, um, the Epistle of James. Then we have the Sea of Mark, Mark. Some say Philip um, was the Ethiopian eunuch. Some say he went to Ethiopia. Others say it was Thomas. Some say Thomas went to India. Others say, no, Thomas went to Ethiopia. Philip went to India. But different ones were over different churches. They had different congregations. They were to be responsible, you know what I'm saying, in their particular church, in their local, that was their local organization. So the church is that basic foundation of our divine heritage. So we wanted to give you 
uh, a close-up of this right here. Now let's bring this out a little bit right here, all right? Now what we were speaking on is, well, what does this say? What does this part say? Is it true? You understand? Because they say right here that um, in the Ethiopian church is a long tradition. This, this fits in the guess has a long tradition, even if they, notice is that if they have not always been put into practice, that means that they have not bowed to the Roman authority. Like we said, we come off a new publication from 1696, brothers and sisters. 1696. It's a little classical in its writing style, but it's very worthy in the amount of information embedded in it. And this was actually coming from a British or a, remember, 1600s, when we call it the, the Church of Sardis in Revelation, the Church of Sardis, which points to the Protestant Reformation. Now, the practice that Ethiopia was consistent in is brotherly love. It's, it, it took the European Christians or Christians of any kind of nationality, if they uh, uh, claimed to be of Christ, it took them on their word. Unfortunately, with the Catholic Church doing that was, some, some people say, was a, was a bad mistake for Ethiopia, and Ethiopia still uh, has not fully recovered from that. So there is some truth to what it says right here in this quoted passage where it says, just as the patriarch has authority. Remember, the patriarch is the father, right? The father has authority and power over those who are under him so also the titular of Rome has power over all other patriarchs because he is the chief, as was Peter, who had power over all Christian chiefs and communities of Christians in his capacity. That's the key word right there, in his capacity as a, a, a representative. They say, they say vicar of Christ as a representative of Christ. But then James, too, who was a bishop over Jerusalem, over the Jewish or the Hebraic church, or Mark, who was over the Coptic or the Greek church, the, I mean, the, the, the Greco, you know, the, remember Coptic come from, I mean, uh, Greek come from Coptic. They try to tell you that Coptic come from Greek, but the Greeks learn how to read and write in Egypt, so you go figure. You know what I mean? But um, what they're trying to stretch the interpretation and say that Rome is over any church. Anyone who says they're Christian is under Rome. And that's been the historical battle against Antichrist. You know what I'm saying? The one who puts himself in that seat and claims that he's Lord over all. You know what I'm saying? But remember, a lot of this has been done by the will of Christ too. You know what I'm saying? What was what I'm saying, what I'm saying this right here? Because Ethiopians understood what was written in the Fit and the Guess, but did not submit to the counterfeit Roman pontiff. As far as Christians, it accepted them as Christians, like the Portuguese who came in to help us against Achmed Grain. But then history will testify to the bloodshed and the religious schisms. The first time in almost in, in thousands of years of Ethiopian Christianity that the Ethiopians began to murder themselves and kill themselves, you understand, over religious differences. This all was the sowing of the Pope, of the papal pontiff, in their attempt to get Ethiopia to bow to their form or deformity of Christianity. Now, notice what it says right here, and we're still in Matthew chapter 7, we at verse 9, where it says, Woim ka'inante liju. In Jerabi Lemno, Dingayena Yemiseto, Kananta Manso no. In other words, or what man is there of you whom if his son acts bread, will he give him a stone? Verse Kuter Aser Asas Asasa Bi Lemno Babina Yiseto Alem Or if he acts a fish no, no, notice something. Notice something. Remember the fish, the pope, the pope's mitre, the Roman pontiff's mitre. Remember the Rome that Ethiopia knew was Byzantium, Byzantium, or what they call the Second Rome. 
speaking of Constantinople, modern day um, Istanbul and Turkey. It was not the other Rome, the switcheroo. They did the switcheroo. You understand? And Ethiopia understood that the switcheroo was done. You understand? And that's why Ethiopia never submitted to the Roman pontiff. But what did they do? What, did, what were the fruit of the Jesuits? You understand? Is there something positive that they did? Oh, on a level, yeah. I mean, individual Jesuits, some of them really w were trying to be Christian at heart. However, they went over to Ethiopia with a mandate, and this is disclosed very clearly in the 1696 treaties that we published, um, the Christian Church um, 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 history, the history of the Christian Church in Ethiopia. We're going to show it to you when, it, when, it, when we get our copy, it comes forward. But notice this right here. Or if he asks a fish, Ethiopia asks the Catholic Christians and the Roman Christians to help them, the Portuguese and the Romans to help them against the Islamic onslaught in the name of Christ as fellow Christians. And what did the Roman pontiff, what was he interested in? He was interested in, do you bow? Are you bowing to the sea, the sea of Peter? Are you bowing to the bastard silica or the, the basilica of, of Peter? Are you bowing to um, um, Peter's basilica, Peter's kingdom? Notice that. Peter is not Christ's kingdom. It's Peter's basilica. Basilio uh, means kingdom, right? Will he give him a serpent? And now history testifies to this Catholic controversy that the, the, the Roman church, the Catholic church, if they're going to be sincere with Ethiopians or black folks, they have to look, first they got to apologize, they got to repudiate what their, what their namesakes have done. You understand? And then there has to be, like I said, faith without works is dead. You understand? But they still are bringing the same old argument, you understand, of the, the, the fit and the guess. Here in the fit and the guess says you recognize Peter, therefore that means you recognize the Pope. You recognize Paul. You know, it says um, rob from Peter and give to Paul or something like that, right? Rob from Peter. Why do they say that? Rob from Peter and give to Paul. Have you ever asked yourself why they say that? Rob from Peter and give to Paul. Okay, let's go forward. But remember what Christ says right here. Or if he asks a fish, right? And fish being the ichthys, ichthys, the symbol of 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 Jesus Christos Theos Heos Soter. You understand? Or ichthys. You understand the, the initials of that? Ichthys, Jesus Christos, um, 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 Theos, Heos, Soter. In other words, uh, Jesus Christ, the, the, the Son of God, Savior. Son of God, Savior, something to that particular effect, right? Which the early Christians were said to have used, right, as their symbol, the symbol of the fish or the... Of uh, the Pisces, Viscera, so forth and so on. Will he give him a serpent? This is exactly what the Ethiopians got, a serpent in her bosom. You understand? All right. All right let's, let's understand that. Because it says right here, it says, In kias, in kias, in nante kufuwo cha sitahonu, leli jochachu, melkam sitota mesat etin, kawak achu, besamayati yalo abatachu, Lemia lemnut in de tabelto melkam negarin y set acho. If ye then, if y'all being evil, I'm basically a good person, that's how you deceive yourself. If ye being evil, then being evil, compared to the standards of Christ, we all are evil. I understand that. That's what we have to grow. You understand? Know Practice makes perfect. Know how to give good gifts to your children. So even if folks who got all their problems know how to try to look out for their children, right? How much more shall your father, our father, but your father which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? I submit to you, Rastafari brothers and sisters, and even us in the Federation, if there's not more happening it's because of that faith-based foundation. Y'all are moving in, in the bylaws. You already open the book and get to the back of the book, the bylaws, instead of looking at the preamble our divine, secure justice, secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage. But instead, like Isaiah says, they've become ashamed of Ethiopia. 
You know what I'm saying? They have become ashamed of Ethiopia. Should we show you this? Yeah, we, we, gotta, we, we, we just got to document this. You know what I'm saying? We can't go on and not document this. Let's, let's find the document right here. So instead of maintaining the integrity of Ethiopia, you got the Negroes, blacks, and colored who are emancipated persons who think they're free, not overstanding freedom and emancipation is two different legal concepts. But after all, they're lawless. They don't know John's law, and that's why man keeps, the white man, the European, keep manipulating him and fooling him by his man-made law, because if they had submitted themselves to John's law, then man's law, you understand, would be a piece of cake, would be a virtual cakewalk. But it's not a cakewalk for I and I. And remember, they're always using the law. Notice how they always do this. They always use the law or some legality. Now, if you go to Isaiah chapter 20, Isaiah chapter 20, right? Isaiah chapter 20, verse 5, it says, And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and of Egypt, their glory. Okay, let's bring it back here after we go there. We want, we want to show you the documentation for yourself, the evidence. Let's go to Isaiah so you can see this with your own eyes and then go study it to make sure it's in your Bible too. Mm -hmm. Don't take my word for it. You understand? Know the truth for yourself. You understand? Study and know these things so you be confident when you teach others. You will know, and when they ask questions, you won't be ashamed to testify for, to this word. You know, most are saying, we need you here, brother, to say something. No, you need to study this and pray for uh, acts, as he says, acts, so you get some, you know, so, so you'll get what you, what, you, what you request. You understand, if you ask him for wisdom, you understand, anyone who asks, as long as you're not double-minded. James, our patriarch and our bishop in Jerusalem, told us that in the epistle of Acts. Okay, this thing is working a little bit slow right here, but give it some time. You understand, give it a moment. You know, say it on your guesses, say, you know what I mean, yeah, you know, because he's trying to, trying to slow down, you got to rebuke, the devil, we rebuke you in the name of the king of kings and his Christ, so lo loosen this up right here, but it's, just write this down for your own note, um, Isaiah chapter 20, you know all these verses where Ethiopia is mentioned, people can point to them, but what's the connection? What's the connection? I submit to you because we lack that connection. You know what the, the working, the operative, what's the operative connection? You know, it's easy to point out Ethiopia here and there, so forth and so on, but, but, but what's the connection, you understand, with, 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 with prophecy and, and with where we're at right now? So we're going we're gonna to move forward from this right here. We might have to restart this. We'll just restart this program. May have to even restart this this computer and to redo this lecture right here. So we might have to pause for the cause. But let us go um, to our next quote. So keep that on hand right there. Keep that on hand for your note. Yeah, it's giving us some some so-called errors right here coming up. All right, technology, technology. Right. Mm hmm. But these are just tools, my brothers and sisters. We've got to learn how to use these tools. That's why I say study and show thyself approved. As a what? As a what? As a what? As a who? What, what kind of workman? A workman. So I mean there's work to do. But we can't do no work if we don't study and learn what the work needs to be done. If we're not in our proper person. If we're not repented and born again. You understand? And seeking to conform ourselves. You understand? To his son, to Yeshua HaMoshiach. And Rastafari, we are without excuse. We are without excuse. Because Matthew clearly says that in, in the English translation as well as the Amharic original. Now, why is the fit and the guest the law? Because the fit and the guest is a law. You see, it's the law of kings. But that law of kings is based squarely on Torah. It's based squarely on you know what I'm on the foundation from the Old Testament, the law. I remember Christ didn't come to do away with the law. Overstand that. He didn't come to do away. He came to fulfill it. Now, where we had left off in the previous portion, I think we was in Galatians. And hopefully that's, that's the part that you got to see. We didn't get a chance. We're still recording. We didn't get a chance to, to check out or look at that portion of the video. But we're going to seek to, 
you know, we're going to seek to upload that right there. Okay, let's let's get right here. Let's see if that has opened up so we can show you that that verse. And then we got an error. Okay, an error with the program, an error with this file right here. All right, so let's go away from that. So the verse, okay, here we at. Here we at Isaiah. The English right here in Isaiah didn't seem to come through. I don't know if this is an error right here in the programming. It's, it's still a, basically a very good programming right there for those who know their fidels, you know, saying those who have gone to their basic Rastafari bar mitzvah, you know what I'm saying? That means now they are they are are are, are um, men and women, you, you know what I mean, are able to take adult responsibility in the community. Mm-hmm. See, because we move from the church to the government. So the churchical foundation to build our divine heritage is important in Rastafari. The first, do you see why the Federation, the Ethiopian World Federation is not meeting the expectations? It's not because it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's because we have not, in our zeal, in our zeal, and in the zeal of the previous generation. You understand? Paul talks about that in Romans, about the zeal. You understand? Because of their zeal, but not having the knowledge, seeking to establish our own righteous, right? Yes, I know that is righteous. I, uh, you understand? Is it really righteous? Because you said it in a way that seems to want to convince me, but you haven't really given me the teaching of His Majesty. You're not coming with this doctrine, this teaching. You understand? So the church, the churchical aspect is the root and the foundation. Because the people who established the Ethiopian World Federation, Constitution, and bylaws, you understand? Let's see if we can get some light on this. Can we get some light on this? You understand? Who established this document right here? You see the date? 1937. Ethiopian World Federation. Most folks, instead of going to, right, this is the preamble. You see this preamble right here? The preamble. We, the black peoples of the world, in order to affect unity, solidarity, liberty, freedom, and self-determination to secure justice and maintain the integrity of Ethiopia, which is our divine heritage, do hereby establish and ordain this constitution for the Ethiopian World Federation Incorporated. So when it says right there, our, our divine heritage is speaking of what does divine heritage mean? And I've used this as a kind of a, a example for many ones and ones. I've asked different ones, what does divine heritage mean to you? To see whether ones are, are qualified, especially for any office in the Federation, to represent us. If they don't know the divine heritage, it's a Judeo-Christian heritage. It's, it's the covenant. You understand? It's the Al-Kidan. It's the Benai Barit. You understand? If, it's not that, if it doesn't square with that, it can't be built. These people who established it at this time, this... Ethiopian World Federation Constitution and Bylaws, they were the best black Christians I've seen in modern times because they believed in the gospel word, but they connected the racial, the identity, the humanity of Christ. You understand? That means they recognize that he's black, that he's one of us, that we're Ethiopians, that Ethiopian, the Bible, they had a correct understanding of it. Even though we're Rastafari, a lot of us don't have that because where would we have learned it? You know what I'm saying? From, from the liars who have been lying to us, telling us we're Negroes, niggas, blacks, and colored, then 13th, 14th Amendment, artificial person. You know what I'm saying? We talk about natural. We have to understand what natural law, becoming natural persons and natural in-laws and being born again is all about. So you see that our divine heritage right there, right? Our divine heritage. Make note of that right there. All right? This is the preamble. So let's open this up right here. Let's um, open this. This is this is the man you should know. You know what I'm saying? In fact, instead of putting up pictures of Marcus Garvey, you should be putting up pictures of him. But you might not know about him, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's the one whom his majesty sent. I would even say he was like that angel that Jah says he was sent to his people in the wilderness. But if his angels don't pay attention... In other words, if his people don't pay attention you, you could talk to the angel that he has sent, they're going to wander for 40 years. Have we not wandered for 40 years? Why are we just finding out about the Ethiopian World Federation right now, most of us? Why? It's such a historic part of our heritage. You understand? And who we are. This is the one that we should be putting up pictures of, you understand, as far as recognizing instead of Marcus Garvey. I tell you this squarely without any apology. 
You understand? As a soldier of the King of Kings, as a soldier of Christ. You understand? You want to war about that? You're going to lose because it is written. You see, it is written right here. Dr. Malako Emmanuel Bayan. He is the one whom has been sent. So, so Lincoln Marcus Garvey to this organization is, is, is poor. Yes, Marcus is part of our history, but not a part of this organization. This takes us to a whole new height. Marcus is still on the Negro stuff. He was on the Negro shit, the Negro. You know, this is a universal Negro improvement, you know, um, 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 association. And he died as a Roman Catholic, and he, and he denied his majesty, you know, basically. Yes, he was a powerful black man, no doubt about it. Much of what he has said still can be referred to limitedly, you know what I'm saying? But compared to teaching of his majesty and the one whom his majesty has sent, put priority, put, put matters in proper order. You know what I'm saying? This, this, is, this is the man that you you need to know more about. You know what I'm saying? So if you're really representing, you, you put a picture of his majesty up there, put a picture of Dr. Malako Emanuel Bayan. You know what I'm saying? This links with our real heritage, which once again in the preamble, let's go back to this right here. Remember our divine heritage, right? Now notice this right here. This is the art, first article, right? This is the first article, name, aims, and objects. Notice this right down here. This is what we're referring to right here, to promote love and goodwill among Ethiopians at home and abroad, and thereby to maintain the integrity and sovereignty of Ethiopia. To disseminate, you said word disseminate, it means to sow the seed, like the parable of the sower. To sow the seeds of the ancient Ethiopian culture among its members, comma, to correct abuses. Then it goes on. Now, how can we correct abuses if we don't have law? Right? And then it says here, it says to relieve, can you see that? To relieve oppression, and to carve for ourselves and our posterity a destiny comparable with our idea of perfect manhood, right, and God's purpose in creating us. So we have to go to Genesis, to the foundation, that we may not only save ourselves from annihilation going down with the Gentiles in Babylon, but carve for ourselves a place in the sun. In this endeavor, we determine to seek peace and pursue it. That's the Psalms. That's a, almost a direct quote from the Psalms. For it is the will of God for man. Remember when we talked about the seven? Remember when we talked about the seven? We said, we said, we said there's will, wisdom, right? Order, will, wisdom. See, the order is Torah. The order is the churchical foundation. It's the cross. It's the square. It's the cipher. You understand? It's the 360. It's that foundation. Torah the scriptures, you know, in the Bible, for my part, I glory in the Bible, not my words, you know, but my father's words, our father's words. Now, notice this right here. We finally got the scripture to come up right here. We want to show you that, but notice how the black people now who come into the federation, no longer black people, was we Ethiopian. Now, if we work out, if, if we declare that by faith, should we not work out our paperwork? Why, why do we have foreign names? And then we go to Ethiopia with our foreign names, and we say, they don't want to accept us as Ethiopian. Well, you're not working out your faith either. I mean, you want somebody to call you um, Roski Argus, for example, but your name is George Jefferson. Is that Roski Argus Jefferson? I mean, what's going on there? How come, what's with your paperwork? You're not in your proper legal person. See, if you're not in that proper legal person, how are you going to talk about doing business and you're still under the white man's names and they're going to come into agreement with you and then the white man can use that like he did with the Battle of Ottawa where something was sold to an individual and that person then sold it to Mussolini and the government and the government used that as a stepping stone to declare the Romans that we have territory because an individual sold it to somebody and that person then gave it to the Romans. You know what I'm saying? Please understand that. But it says right here in Isaiah 20 and 5, in Narsum, Katesfacho, Ethiopia, Katima Kahitacho Wim, Kagibit Yetanesa, Yifaralu, Yafrumal. And they shall be what? And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. And of Egypt, their glory. Now it says, Anarsum and they, right? And they cut from their hope, cut Ethiopia, 
from Ethiopia called Tim Tacho Wim and from the uh, the boasting, something that we boast called Gibbet or Gibt the Geb uh, the Geb uh, the Geb uh, the Gebet land or the Geb land, Egypt, Kemet, Geb Gibt, right? Kagibit Yetanesa Yifralu Yafruma. So they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. But look at how expectation by Marinia is Tesfa. Tesfa. Asking the Ethiopia. What does Tesfa mean? Tesfa is hope. Hope is expectation. So from their hope from Ethiopia, notice something right here. Notice something right here. If you go to this chapter, chapter 20 of Isaiah, what does it say right here? It says, and so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captive, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Now notice how in reggae music, some of the older roots reggae music, they talk about the Assyrian. You notice that? And a lot of the old rootical songs, I don't know if any of you all listen to the real reggae, the real roots reggae, but if you listen to those old root songs, some of the lyrics talk about the Assyrian. You understand? Even Edward Siaga was likened to the Assyrian. Some say he actually had Syrian background. The Bible now tells us that it wasn't so much the, the Egyptians that were persecuting the Beta Israel, but it was Egyptianized Assyrians. That was the Assyrians who were persecuting, uh, and, and it's in Isaiah too. It says that the Assyrians persecuted, that my people went down there to sojourn, and it was the Assyrians who persecuted them there. Now it's interesting that Assyria is mentioned here and something that seems like slavery. Right? Something that seems like slavery, marching, or have the, the e Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks covered, uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Now, there's a whole deeper kind of a thing here, even with the buttocks part. You understand? The buttocks. Actually, it would not be the buttocks uncovered. I noticed that the word buttocks is improper, even with their genitals, because this word gela. Remember we talked about the word gela? It, gela is their genitals. If you read in this Torah portion, it says that the priests, the Levites, had to shave, shave their, 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 their bodies or their flesh. It really is saying that they had to shave, and this sounds a little bit strange to some, but it kind of makes sense. They had to shave their private parts. They had, remember, the Le Levitical is all about cleansing and health and hygiene. They had to shave their their private areas. Plus, the shaving for the priests of their private areas was reminded to keep that part clean. You know what I'm saying? Not to be going around doing a lot of con co Why did you shave that? You shaved that in entering into this Levitical order. It's not shaving the hair on your head or whatever, but it's shaving the private area. And that's how I know this word, Gela. And so here, where it says, it says, in Dihu, ye asor negus. Uh, yeah, they'll be not led away, they'll be driven like cattle. You understand? Know with their genitals, with their private parts exposed. It's just like in the, you know, sla slavery. It's talking about what happened to us as Ethiopians. So when we see the document of the Federation speaking about Ethiopians at home and abroad, it's talking about us out here in the diaspora. Our true nationality is Ethiopian. Let's recognize now. There's a lot of careless Ethiopian, modern Ethiopians who will say, "You're not Ethiopian. I'm Ethiopian." You understand? Even though they got American citizenship, actually, they're not Ethiopian. They've sold their Ethiopians, like Esau did, in a sense, for something to eat. Now, nothing at all Ethiopian in the situation is a very confused picture there. But they got to work that out. You understand, they're under divine judgment, and they got to work it out. If they turn to Jah, you understand, in spirit and truth, they can work it out. That's what we call this, the Ethiopian Renaissance. And kudos to the government in some level for picking up on that. But we got to restore the monarchy. 
this is where we're going. We got to restore the monarchy. So first the consciousness of Torah law, then the next level of Fitta Nagesh, you understand? And then when we start to deal with man's law in the world, it becomes very easy. It becomes very easy to see it's the law that really got us over a bow. Now, what the popes and them have been trying to do, because we want to dub this part, we're still in the papal controversy right here. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and this connects with um, more, more of the Ethiopia aspect of it, because we already kind of settled the papal controversy matter. You know what I'm saying? Ethiopia has grown up. Ethiopia is no longer their little child. You know what I'm saying? And how has Ethiopia grown up? Because our father... You understand? His Majesty has given Ethiopia, he brought Ethiopia out of Egypt 1,600 years later, so it's no longer under any other church. You understand? It's a, it, it's a full-fledged partner, you understand, or full-fledged in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. In a sense, it always has been, but the Father gave this particular sign for a particular reason. And so let's go to Galatians for a moment so you can better understand this, if we can, get, if we can move, this, move this along right here, right? Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting that it talks about the islands in the next verse. Prophetically, that can be linked with even Jamaica on a certain level. Yes, it's, Jamaica is a part of the prophecy. You know, it's a part of the prophecy as Benjamin. A very important. When you start looking at from that Hebrew Israelite, black Hebrew Israelite perspective that, that Jamaica and the Caribbean is Benjamin, it becomes very much clearer, this prophetic picture. You know what I'm saying? It becomes such a beautiful, it's, it's almost like a symphony in a sense. It becomes like when music, when many people are playing music and they all come together and they're playing in harmony. You know what I'm saying? It becomes very, there's a rhythm. What I'm trying to get across is that there's a rhythm to it. So we're going to go to Galatians for a moment, Galatians chapter, chapter 4, right? Now, chapter 4, what did Galatia Saroch Bamarinya from His Majesty's Metaf Kedus, the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, what did Galatia Saroch Miraf Arat, Galatians 4, says, Negergen Lalo, Warashu Hitanohono Balabit. Balabet Zemen Hulu, Minim Yehulu Geta Bihon, Kato, Kabaria Idel Ayaleya, Kabaria Ayaleya. It says, Now I say, Neger again, but Elalo, I say to you, Warashu, that the heir, as long as he is a child, Hitan Hono, differeth nothing. Balabit Zemin Hulu, he differs nothing from a servant. Minim, you understand? Ye Hulu Geta Bihon, Kato Kabaria I Layim. Though he be Lord, though he be Geta, or in the Hebraic Adonai, and the Ethiopians also call the Lord Adonai, that's another link that, with that Hebraic root, that Judeo Christian culture. That is our, that is our divine heritage. You see, that's the preamble. That's what must be understood before one even walks through the gate and say, yes, I am a member of the Federation, or yes, I'm a part of that body of Christ. They have to recognize the covenant, the context of it. Otherwise, you are entering into an agreement like you've entered into under 13th, 14th Amendment agreement, you know, as a so-called black, negro, or colored, where you have waived your rights. See, there's rights that we have to recognize that we have in the covenant. And it says, negative again, our batu is katarelet. But is under tutors and governors until the time what appoints the father. Now you'll notice something in the scriptures, in the New Testament especially. There's a couple of places where both Christ, the Moshiach, he says it, right, as well. Both the father and the son say it, and, and even the the anointed ones like here, Hawari Apollo, speaking to the Galatian local, the local of Galatia. That's what these different epistles were to different locals. You understand? Just like the Federation, but when we come from the proper divine heritage, the church, the church, the churchical foundation in spirit and in truth. So both the son says, 
in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, that um, when they said, would you restore the kingdom to Israel now? Would you restore the government? In other words, they wanted a federation at that time, an Ethiopian World Federation at that time. Would you give us this sort of authorization? And Christ, very interestingly enough, says, and, and let's see if we can get that for you. It's Acts chapter 1. Let's see if we can go to Acts chapter 1, because you can see this for yourself, take note of it, and then go note this and study it on your own. Then you will know the truth. You understand? You, so here we're in Acts chapter 1. Right here we're in Acts chapter 1. Um, let's go to verse, uh, let's see, where, what, what verse right here? We have heard of the, right here, verse 6. You see verse 6? It says, And now assume that the Sabbath is a good But you are right, let's go to the next one. And you are right, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Adonai, Adoni, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Would you give us that kingdom authority? I mean, you, you overcame death and hell and the grave. I mean, so, so now we can, you are king, and we're going to set the kingdom and beat those Gentile Romans down, right? Can't we do that right now? Get up. Adoni, Lord, Master, Arsum, and he, Ab, Begeza, Begeza, Sultanu, Yadarago, and Waratinam, Zenanatin, Taukuzen, Lenante, Alatasat, Achum. And he said to them, It is not for you. He's speaking to the disciples. Remember, it's Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 7. He's speaking to the apostles, the Hebrews. Right? Remember, the Hebrews are just like us in this present time. Well, we're under the Romans, we're under the Gentiles, we're going through a slavery, we're second class, third class, uh, no class citizens. You understand? Our shitty sins in this whole kind of conspiracy. You understand? Um, and he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. He said, it's not for you. So here's the key, waratina, which are the Hebrew times and seasons, like the birth of his majesty was also in the times and seasons, Lich Teferi, Waratna Zemenatin. Now, his majesty brought in the Adis Zemen, the new age, our new age, 1930, or 30, if you please. You understand, Ethiopia says, which, right, these are times and seasons, he says, which the Father hath put in his own power. Ab the Geza in his own, that means he, he rules this. Sultan, Sultan, Sultan. In other words, in his own authority. That the Father has this in his own authority. He said, don't you worry about the restoration time. Now, when you start to study, well, how come the kingdom wasn't restored to Israel from a Christian perspective? They will tell you that the second coming had to happen. And you know, when Christ, when, when he comes again, he'll, he'll, he will restore Israel and, and, and the church will be cleansed and purified, you understand, of the Antichrist element, so forth and so on, right? Here's what's interesting. We see that he says the Father, remember the connection between Father and Son? You know what I'm saying? He says the Father. So this too is within the authority of the Father. Now, when we say His Majesty, Haile Selassie, is Christ in His kingly character, that is not to say that He is Yeshua or He is Jesus or He is Jesus Christ, the Son, or Jesus of Nazareth. Let's get that clear. Some folks don't understand that because they don't understand the three persons in the Trinity. They don't really understand that it's the person of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us recognize, and the church is like Mary. The church is our mother, but the church is not the building. You know what I'm saying? The church is the body of those, of those Christians, the body of us. All come together in Christ. We form that church. You understand? And the church, therefore, is likened to that woman, is likened to that bride. That's where we get the bride, the whole bride idea, the New Jerusalem idea. So Christ says, Yeshua says, that it wasn't to happen nearly 2,000 years ago, but that there would be an interloping dispensation. And here some folks get into the whole dispensationalism. So if you've been studying dispensationalism, some of this can become clear, you understand, from the scriptures. But the scriptures have to be our guide. 
because we're looking directly at the scripture. So some things are in the authority of the Father and even the father of Africa, the one who sits on that throne, the throne of David. The Bible says that the throne of David would never lack a man to sit on it. You understand? To sit on it. And now we have a fulfillment in Edomawi Haila Selassie, in Moa Andesa, the Imanageta Yehuda, in the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. We have our banner. You understand this, this here, our banner, or the banner of salvation, which in its sense, in, in itself, in a very powerful sense, is telling you the story in the flag. The flag tells you the story, even the proper orientation of the colors. There's four colors on here, but you probably only see three. You understand? Then the four colors are the first four colors of the spectral, of the chakra, of the seven seals. It is red, orange, yellow, and green. In this order, when you understand the chakra order, the colors, and based on the temple of man, you will see the connection. But notice this. This lion, right, symbolic of Christ, is carrying, you understand, is carrying the banner and then has the, the crown with the cross on it. No cross, no crown. The true overstanding of no cross, no crown. So if there's a kingdom authority, if there's an authority, there must be a governmental structure. That means there must be law. Remember Christ says that many will say, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these things, cast out demons, preach prosperity gospel and all that? We've done a lot of stuff. We've got a lot of money and all these kind of things. And he'll say, get away from me. I never knew you, ye lawless. You are lawless. They don't have a law. They're not under the law of kings, or the law of the king of kings. They're not under Torah law. They're not building their house on the foundation. So what is the role of law? So we're applying this, this, this lecture both to the fits and the guests, you understand, more directly, and in an a, in a, um, a, a indirect way, you understand, indirect way we should say to the, the, the fits and the guests. You understand? Know but before the fits and the guests, there's Torah law. And if you study the fits and the guests, there's many references, you understand, know to the Torah law. Because remember, the Ethiopian testimony is that we are not outlaws. We're not outside the law. We are in law. And the Ethiopian eunuch's example is so beautiful because he was in Jerusalem for the high holy days. Only a Jew or a Hebrew does such things. You understand? Know so now this is a Hebrew that, 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 or a Jew, a faithful Jew, a Judahite that accepts Christ. You understand? Know that was rare in that time, but it did happen, especially among the Ethiopian or, as one would say, the black, the black Jews. You understand? Know now it says right here, back to Galatians 4, that the ear, the warash, the alga warash, lidstafari, rastafari, even I and I, that the ear, as long as he is a child, so when you're born again, are you born big? Are you born as a big old adult? Are you born as a child? You're born as a child. You know, when you accept the truth, when you accept the gospel, the good news, and, and you repent and you say, yes, I want you to be born again. You understand? I want to follow Christ. What do you say? Deny yourself, pick up your cross, and follow me and learn of him. You have to recognize that just, you have to have a child perspective, a lidge, a lidge perspective. And you differ nothing from a servant. I understand that. But not a servant of men and people, but a servant of God and a servant of those in God. And your knowledge and your, and your awareness of this. Not under a bunch of spookism. That people say the Bible says, and ask them where in the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Where in the Bible? You know, where does it say it? And oh, somewhere in the Bible. Oh, okay, yeah, right. All right, somewhere can you find it and give it to me? Here's my phone number. Anyway, negative again, verse 2. About 2 is karet let endres katabak iwoch na kamegabi woch betach. No, it says, but is under tutors. In other words, keepers, protectors, tabaki, or even in a modern sense, tabaki is lawyers. In other words, it's under Torah, Torah, you know, the Torah. We are like lawyers when we study the Torah. You understand? And that's, that's, there's so much in that, my brother. I hope you're picking up on that, how important it is. Because what really stops us from really making the moves, even people have business ideas but can't really do it because they don't understand law. 
You know what I'm saying? Or maybe something more basic like reading and writing. They didn't get the opportunity and, and maybe feel shame of that. They need to get over that, need to study and recognize that, that education is the key. You know what I'm saying? And the basic reading and the writing, get those basic fundamentals right there. You know, you might not have time for like a, a 24-year college course or something. You know what I'm saying? In times like these, and it says, betach, or under Megabiwoch, Megabiwoch are stewards, literally are feeders, are those who feed. So imagine a royal child in a royal household. Right, a royal child, an Ethiopian royal in a royal household, male or female, for that matter, because there's no male or female in, in, in Christ. You know, at this basic level, and this is for the men and the woman to know. You understand? Because remember, the woman will be mothers, Yah willing, and they have children, and the mother is the first teacher. So if she is faithful, then she would teach her child the faith. You understand? And if she is ignorant, she would teach her child the ignorance. Let's understand that very carefully. You understand? Something to think about, right, brothers? You understand? You know, I mean, because sometimes we make choices that, you know, are not the best because we are ignorant, because all of us are lost. We're like lost sheep. So now is for the light, you know, the illumination of the truth. So we're under, we're under those who are like lawyers and feeders. We want to keep our protectors, guardians, and feeders. Right? Then it says right here, even so, when we were children, we're in bondage under the elements of the world. So even when we become children, we're still under this, this world order. You know, a lot of the ignorance of this world order, the operation of the system. Right? It says that we were under, what's interesting, it says the elements. It says, Ka'alem, from the world, Mejameria, the first Timharit, right, teachings, Betach, that we was under the, the elementary, the basic teachings. You know, the basic law and order. You understand? Well, we don't even recognize the, the you know, um, impropitia persona sujuris. What does that really mean, being in our proper person before the law? We don't see the detriment of having slave masters' names on ourselves and our children and, and, the, and the dangers of, of, of civil rights to the ignorance of human rights. You know, but now notice this right here, verse 4, it says, It says, it says, but when the fullness of time was come, that means there was a certain time set, a certain dispensation that God, Ha Elohim, that Elohim, Ha Elohim Baruchu, blessed be He, sent forth His Son. That Abba sent his son, Gitachin Jesus Christos, made of a woman. Or really, Bamarinya, I think he really says, Kasait Yeta Yeta Waled the Win from a woman, one who is born of a woman, or one who is born from a woman made under the law. You understand? Know it says actually under the law he was born. He's a child Right now, it's interesting because the translation says made, but here it says born, birth. And I, and I can't really wait until Legends of Our Lady, you know, saying Mary, Mariam, the perpetual virgin, and her mother Hannah come forward. I think that's such a vital, valuable book for the sisterhood. We're promoting that book for the sisterhood of Rastafari and faithful Ethiopian Hebrew woman. It, 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 is, it is so key that when we start to study the gospel and, and, and understand what it's really saying to us, both of it is a personal application and then there's a collective application, and it, it reverses all these curses, all these lies that we have been told, you know what I'm saying, in spirit, in, in soul, psychologically, and, and in the material um, five cycle world or the physical world. To do what? To redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons, more correctly, of children in the Lijoch, 
in the lejocha in the honzen ka higbetacha yalutena ye wajzen ye waj right that those to redeem them that were under the law that were basically to say in laws really but th- those who were under that law who were being kept and protected by the law that we might receive Kabbalah or Kebaleh, but why, that we might receive the adoption. There's an adoption of children. That means becoming sons and daughters, not empresses and, 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 and kings. You know, I know it sounds nice to call yourself king this and king that, and I, I, I tried that out for a stint, but it was like when you re- really recognize what is contained in a kingship, you know, the responsibility was more than I could be at that time. You understand, and even now, when you rec- I prefer to be a, 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 a son, a child, and grow up. You learn so much more. You understand, you can even become wiser than your teachers. Yes, brothers and sisters, I go challenge you. You understand, verse 6 says, Lejo chim slehonachu egziavihir ab. It says, and because ye are sons, or more correctly, updating the King James little sexy, sexism thing going on here, because you are children, because you are children, because you are sons and daughters, not empresses, you know, nine way out. Don't 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 go above your grade, people. That's a setup when people set you up above your grade, because you can't defend that grade. It's a setup for something. Don't don't go for that. You understand? Like I said to some of the brothers and sisters, I said, if I go around calling myself Emperor Iadonis, you say this this nigga lost his mind. I, I was liking what he was doing. Why why he go there? You understand? The same thing. Why we allow our sisters and encourage them to go there? You understand? Even put some of them on that particular level because what we're trying to be, be Hilar Selassie instead of being his son, being his child and the example of Yeshua. So let's get matters in proper order so we can get our blessings on. You understand? And get movement once again. It says, and because ye are sons or children, God, Ha Elohim Baruchu, Ek Giziavi Herlotu, Subhat, to him be the praise, hath sent forth the spirit, the Ruach, the Marinya, the Memphis of his son. Notice what it says. When we become children, Jah sends forth the spirit of, of who? Of who? Of his son. Where? Into your heart. So actually, into your heart. One heart. One heart. We have one heart. Biblically, it's not libo. It's not lib, libo chachu. It's libachu. It's one libachu, not libo chachu, not libo chachu. Right? It's it's your it's like all of us. It's speaking to all of us collectively as possessing one heart, and that's true. That means we are one corporate person. Though we may be in different locals or different groups or different areas, we are still in the in the true spirit, the true tuwahedo, um, ritua haimeno, the true faith, the right faith, the correct faith, by translation, the orthodox faith. So he sends forth the spirit of who? His son. Who is his son? Our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshia. He sends forth the spirit of who? He sends forth the spirit of his son into our heart. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the key right there where it says to try every spirit. Here's how you know them. One, two, one, say, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm one, I'm, I'm of that. So for, you have to try this spirit because the Bible clearly says that if one doesn't bring this doctrine, if one don't bring the Tim Herod, if one don't bring the teaching of his majesty, it might mean that they still have more to learn. They might not have learned everything. You might be at a higher grade than they. But you can tell whether they, if you are in truth, you can tell whether they are in truth or not. You know what I'm saying? You're not judging by appearances, you, you know, because that's a violation. It's a violation for us to judge by appearances. You know what I'm saying? And even with the Gentiles, we'll know how to minister to the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? Know what to tell the Gentiles. You know what I'm saying? And therefore to see whether they are faithful and righteous Gentiles. Because they don't do what Jah said. Then they ain't going to do what I and I say. You know what I'm saying? Putting them under Jah's authority is, 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 you know, is the way to go. You know what I'm saying? That's the way to move forward. 
But let's go right here because we want to show you this right here where it says right here, it says that to redeem them which were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons and says that because you are children that John have sent forth the spirit of his son, of Christ, of Jesus Christus, our black Lord and Savior. Because they denied his humanity to be black, we have to reaffirm his humanity. We know that the spiritual is before the fleshical or the physical. We over that, and we should over that. You understand? And that's why we're, we're affirming the spirit of his son. But we just want to identify for our people who have been hoodwinked and bamboozled into Caesar Borgias and the whitewashed Jesus. That's not that white Jesus. You understand? Because they lied to you with his, his complexion, his, his, his race. His nationality. You know what I'm saying? They're going to lie to you about so many other things. Why should you trust them? It's clear they're liars or they're just ignorant. One or the other. So he sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Abba. You know what I'm saying? So we, so we know that he is Abba Kedus. You know what I'm saying? Abba Kedus. Now, over this how this was already written, and we see it being manifested in our present time in the revelation of Ras Tefari. And it says, Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. In other words, we are not a servant, especially that we are not slaves of white supremacy. You know what I'm saying? We're not slaves of white supremacy, as it says right here in verse 7. You know what I'm saying? Not a servant. Silezi, Kengadi, Wadi, Lija, Lijna, Inji, Bariai, Delehim. It says, therefore thou art no more a servant. Now in our experience as once lost but now found, I said, no, you are no longer a slave. But now if we have that faith, we have to work out that faith. So there are real steps in the real world that we have to take. You understand? As we are learning, as we are growing, and, and always to pray on these things and ask for them to guide us in the Holy Spirit. You understand? And then and, and pray in the name of Yeshua. See, that's the authority right there. If we approach Abba outside of that, that's like, that's like saying that we, we just ignore what the King of Kings has taught us and what Christ has testified and what the Bible reveals to us. You understand? That's rebellious. You understand? We might rebel against Babylon because Babylon is unjust, but not against the King of Kings and his Christ. I mean, don't go mad now. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant but a son. So we are sons and daughters. That's the first level. The bar mitzvah, the bat mitzvah, the welde to his eyes, the waleta to his eyes. And if a son, right, and if a son or a daughter, then an ear than an ear of God. That means we have an inheritance of God. You see what I'm saying? Through Christ. Make sure you understand that inheritance of God in Christ or through Christ. You understand? In Christ, you understand? Or, or inherit, an, an, an inheritor or inheritance of God through Christ. Or one can translate that as in Christ. But understand the Christ, the Son connection. You, you understand? Because he sent his Son for us. And his majesty come and testify of that son and say some very cryptic things in some of his utterances. If you go to the Falachi interview, that woman Falachi, if you go to her interview and she asks him some question, he says that um, um, to serve Ethiopia as a father would serve his son. I, I thought that's very interesting if you look at that particular inter interview and his majesty's answer. You know, um, that must have went over Falachi's head when, she, you know, when, when his majesty responded. But he says that um, what gives him pleasure is to serve Ethiopia as a father would serve his son. I thought that was very interesting. You know, and it brings to mind this particular, this particular picture. And now notice how this connects with this whole New World Order and everything we're going through right now and when we go to the next verse, which is now, um, um, it says, How be it then, when ye knew not God, when we didn't know really the true God, all we knew was white Jesus. We didn't know the true God. You know what I'm saying? Um, we knew the white Jesus. Ye did service to them which by nature which by their own natural um, condition or, or, or disposition, you understand, are no gods. 
So we serve white supremacy. We serve the white system of things. Many of you are still doing it, the Eurocentric system of things. We worship their gods, even though they, by nature they wasn't even gods. You understand? But now, after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereto ye desire again to be in bondage? You know what I like in this too? There's a lot of interpretation of this portion of what Hawadia Alos is saying right here. When, when he says these two verses right here, Neger again, Bezian Gizek, Giziabirin Satauku, Be Bahere Yacho, Amalikta Lemaihonu, Baria Wocho Honachu, Tegezacho, Ahun Gine Giziabirin Sita Sita Tauku, Yilkes, the Exiabia Sita Tauku, in the Gena, what a decama, what a Nia Nafik, what a Minafikim. What a Majamaria to Maharitan data to Mele Salachu in the Gena Baria Wocho Honachu Dagmenya Lezia Litigezu to Wadalachu. In other words, like, how are you basically going backward? It's almost like right now we as Rastafari, after everything we learned about the Madsi Federation, Constitution, all that, right? We still run around with slave masters' names. Think about it for a moment. And we said we're Ethiopians. Really? I mean, even um, the, the brother who, who, the first brother to write about the slave, um, Equinano, Equiano, um, who wrote about that, you understand? Even he changed his name. You know what I mean? From, from way back then, because he understood law. He understood law right there. But we're going back to those same vaguely elements. We still are like saying, you hear some folks say, oh, we need like uh, the U.N. And, and get some money from the nations. That means the nations, you know, um, you know what I'm saying? It's like turning back to the base instead of using that as a platform to remind them of the teachings of his majesty, of, of, of international morality, collective security, to remind them that they're going the wrong way and they're going to destroy themselves. You understand? So it's testifying to the truth. We are bowing under their system. Now it says, ye observe days, months, times, and, and years. I'm afraid of you, least I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Now notice who he was speaking to. He was not speaking to a Hebrew congregation. Understand that. He's speaking to the Galatians, which probably had certain um, Hebrews were there. Yeah, certain, certain, it probably was a mixed multitude. You understand there, but mainly it was like a lot of us who live in the West and do Western things. So when it says observe days, months, times, and years, I'm talking about the Hebraic. You understand? Know Paul clearly tells you that that we have much through our Alakidan Benai Berit. He he doesn't deny it like some Gentile Christians will make you believe. And in na warina zemenim ametenim that in akaya te teba kalacho. In other words, you observe all these uh, Gentile things, uh, you know, prescriptions. He says, I'm afraid of you, least I have bestowed upon you um, labor in vain. Manal bat bekentu le nanta dekamealo bie eferacho halo. You know, that's after we teach you all this, ones are still going to hold on to, to their Babylonian names. The, or, or the names Babylon has given them and don't recognize, you know, like still going backwards, still, still, well, we can't come together and do our own thing. We have to wait till we get a government grant or get some money from somebody else or try to get some celebrity or superstar involved to attach themselves to us so we feel better. What kind of, what? Brethren, brethren, when the much holy, I beseech you, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all, right? Ye know how through infirmity of the flesh I preach the gospel to you at the first. Now, he, he's basically speaking about his personal relationship, you understand, with them. You know, because as you start to then, if you notice, as people start to, like, you get a little job in Babylon or something like that, one get a job in Babylon, start to get a little property, get a little money in their hand. They're not thinking about repatriating. They're not thinking about moving forward, coming out. You know what I'm saying? They start to go backward, so forth and so on. He's saying, remember how it was at the very first. 
You know, so I'm, I'm just using that particular portion, and chapter 3 is also very instructive as well because there Paul is making a perfect comparison with um, why the law or the study of law, and here we put the fitta neges, because this is canon law. Now, you have to understand the importance of canon law because very soon Babylon is about to put um, y'all who want to live as Gentiles, or as so-called Ethiopians in your heart, but Gentiles on paper, they're about to put this whole thing under, under canon law. And a lot of people have been talking about the Sunday law, where they're going to start persecuting people for keeping the Sabbath. And some of these hip-hop, shit-hop videos, they're kind of putting it, if you look at the art, they're kind of showing you uh, that the persecution is coming forward. You understand a persecution is coming forward, and this is all part of um, trying to bring their version or perversion of a new world in, in, in order, so-called, a new new world order for them. But really, this is about God's new world order, you understand, because we're going to end off on this right here, this particular section right here, and then take it up on another um, topical theme, most likely related to this since the Federation, the Ethiopian World Federation, a lot of questions are, are coming up and ones want to know, well, what is our involvement and asking about the two-headed monster, you know, that is existing. What I mean by that, there are two or three perhaps maybe different ones running around saying that they are the executive and you might hear about this and that and the next thing. What we're focusing on is what the preamble say. You understand what Article 1, Section 2A says, the very, the very foundation of it. Because if one's not in that proper heart and mind, they can't, they're not worthy to fulfill the will. And therefore, the fruit, the fruit of what's going on, the confusion, the lack of inertia, you understand, one's being, being turned away by those false rumors that ones are spreading, you know, saying that there's no more land. You understand? Know that's what they're trying to tell folks. There is no more land. That's what we showed you some of the, the Google aerial view. There's a lot of land. We're talking about land. You understand? Know there's a lot of land there. Who, who's lying to you? Oh, it's so difficult. Oh, there's this. They're using all kinds. Of, and it's the same thing that happened to our people in, in the, when they came out of Egypt. Now we're in spiritual Egypt, and they're trying to do the same thing. You see, when we know the Scripture, the Scripture is our wisdom. You know, saying the Holy Spirit can move upon our heart and show us, oh, look at that again, and, and see that, and then we get the answers to overcome in this present time. Now, here's Revelation chapter 11, verse 14 and 15, just so you can understand a little bit more about this whole, um, this new world order thing, because a lot of folks are being, like, spooked out about this new world order thing. Notice what it says right here, verse 14, it says, Hula tenyao wuyu al the second world was passed, and that whole, and look and see, here it is. Sosa tenyo, oyo, betolo, yimetal. Behold, the third world cometh quickly. And we're living in a time where people say, is that the third world war? Is this the third world war? Oh, China's on the move, Iran, and, and Syria, and Israel's going to bomb this, and, and America's doing that, and the, and the Russians, and all this kind of stuff, and maybe uh, bloody England is going to go against the Falklands, again, down there in Argentina. You know, a lot of things are jumping off, and Christ already said there'll be wars and rumors of wars, and he says, see that your heart be not troubled. So when we see these things, there's opportunities God's giving us as well. You understand? Know but it all depends on, on who you're going to have faith in. Are you going to have faith in all this negative from Babylon and the world, or have faith in the signs and the vision that God's giving you in the world and the testimonies of, of your brothers and sisters of faith? Verse 15, Kut Asara Asara Mist and the Milo, Sabatenyao Melak Nefa. And the seventh angel sounded, that means blew his trumpet, right? Besamayim, and there was great voices in heaven, ya alem mengist, legitachina le arusu, le Christos a honech, le zelale mimma iskazelale ma yinegasal. And it says that there were these great voices in heaven. And they were chanting a new song, our new song. The kingdoms of this world, right, are become, I just thought of something. You know, if our brothers, our heavenly brothers, you know, speak Amharic. Think about it, our goodness. 
People say, oh, no, they won't. They'll speak some other language. All right. Our heavenly father, our heavenly brothers, right? The kingdoms of this world all become the kingdoms of our Lord, all become the kingdoms of Gietachin, of our Lord. The kingdoms of the world, or the kingdom, actually, it doesn't say plural kingdom, it says one kingdom. In other words, the rulership of the earth. For all this New World's conspiracy theory, reality, attempt, provocate, provocation against the King of Kings, all this is going to be neutralized very soon. But here's the key. Where are we? You understand? Know Where are we in spirit and in truth? Where are we in our hearts and minds? Where is our faith? We talk about Babylon's fall and so forth. But it's a mercy that it has not fallen fully as of yet because when it does, it's for the children of God to pick up the pieces and establish law and order. You understand? Law and order. In other words, it's a changing of the guard. Look at Obama's presidency as a kind of a sign. But it could be a false sign in a sense. Because one, they're just thinking, just what, what will Obama do? They don't recognize that there's a, there's a whole global change going on. So the seventh angel sounded and said that the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. That's what they were singing out of the Harlem, um, in Harlem when Haile Selassie came through um, Harlem. They were singing this out of their windows and stuff. It's amazing, ain't it? It's just a reality. It's a manifestation. It says that the four and the twenty elders which sat before God on their seats, they fell upon their faces and they worshipped him. And then there's this song, this song right here, that they say, we give thanks. We, 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 we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come. That's the triune God. You know what I'm saying? That's the triune God right there, right? The God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true God of I and I, the Beta Israel, and Ethiopian Hebrews, and righteous Gentiles. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned, and the nations were, what, angry. That's what you're seeing in the world today. The nations are going buck wild. They're going crazy. You know what I'm saying? They see this awakening. You talk about a great awakening. This is the great awakening. The nations were angry. And thy wrath, whose wrath has come? John's wrath is about to come. It's about to drop, people. The hammer, the maka is about to drop. And thy wrath has come in the time of the dead. All of our brothers and sisters that they martyred, that they killed. You understand? Know that they should be judged, that the matter should be rectified. You know what I'm saying? And that thou shouldest give reward to thy servants, the prophets, the Nabiyat, and to the saints, the Kedusan, and to them that fear or that reverence, that, that, that have, have, have uh, uh, mefrat, tefari, that fear or reverence thy name, small and great. You understand, know whether they got a lot of stuff in the world, they got a little bit, whether they are, are big people or small people. And should it destroy them, which destroy the earth. You know, there's that pollution topic that be in the news all the time. Oh, pollution, global warming. What are we to do? Don't worry about jobs going to work that out. He says, the, the, the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth, who pollute the earth, these so-called globalists, you understand? Then it says something very amazing here. The temple of God, the temple of the temple of Yahweh, Buruku, was opened in heaven, was opened in the heavens, and probably on the mothership, right? And there was seen in his temple. Remember, Moses saw something on the mountain. <laughs> Close encounter, right? Moses saw something on the mountain. He saw a pattern, the heavenly pattern. 
You know what I'm saying? And what he did was create this, you understand, a likeness, a perfect likeness in the tabernacle, which we're studying now in our Torah portion, right? And it says right here that, that the, the temple of God was open in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testimony. His testament, of his testament, Yekidanum Tabot, the was opened, right? And the te in his temple, the ark was seen. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. That sounds like a Nibiru event, doesn't it? Sounds just like what they talk about a Nibiru event. You know, we're saying that the Ark of the Covenant, the original Ark, you could you know there's more than one Ark. You understand that, right? There's the Ark of Mary, there's the Ark of Mikael, and then there was the Ark that, that, that Moshe, that Moses saw in the heaven or aboard the close encounter ship, aboard Yahweh's or what they call Jehovah's, Jehovah's craft. Oh no, you don't want to think that the father has his own his own um his own fleet of spaceships or what you call flying saucers. It's hard to imagine, right? Uh, no, that's like science fiction. It can't be so. This is just too far out there. But this is what your prophets tell you. This is what the Hebrew prophets tell us. You understand? They tell us that there are brothers from other planets. Even Christ in His ascension. Even the Son, Yeshua, you know what I'm saying, in his ascension, you know what I'm saying, in that cloud. What do you think that cloud was symbolic of? To them it was like a cloud. You know what I'm saying, to them it was like a cloud. You know what I'm saying, those crafts. They couldn't say, oh, it was a flying saucer, and it looked like what the Nazis had been trying to reduplicate. You know what I'm saying, because that wasn't the situation then. So there's a bigger picture to this. This is why what we have to focus on. You know what I'm saying? It's right before us. John has not given us something way out and out of space. He said the heavens of heavens are his. The Psalms say that, doesn't it? The heavens of heavens are his. So we hear about the ancient Egyptians and, 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 and Orion and, and the nebula and, and the, the constellations and some connection with that and so forth. That shouldn't be so, so far out to really overstand our ancients even the bible has told us that you know saying? but if we can not even rule and regulate become self-regulating on earth you understand what you're even thinking about anything in outer space like 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 the like the demon possessed people are trying to get off this rock because they know nibiru you understand nibiru is out there you understand they know nibiru nibiru is coming for them or the star of what we call the star of the eighth millennium. So it should not surprise anyone, you understand, it does not surprise us, you understand, of this whole extraterrestrial connection. Remember the rainbow and a flag was given? You understand, that flag was given and you see it there? You understand, you see it there? Yes, my people. So there's more to come on, on this and related subject matter. We're going to take a little pause for the proverbial cause right here. So the fit of the guess, once again, the fit of the guess is a very important study. But I would advise my brothers and sisters, while getting the documents as one is able to or can afford or, you know, can either download or get the PDFs of it, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to continue with us in the Torah portion, the Torah readings and feedings, because that gives us a basic template, a basic foundation. Everything else that we will learn or that is able to be learned in the fit and the guest and referenced in the fit and the guest, we must remember our divine heritage. You know what I'm saying? And within our divine heritage, it was based on that Judeo-Christian, that Al-Kidan. Amos 9 and 7, I think, explains it best. Are you not like the children? See this idea on children. See, our fathers, forefathers, and, and matriarchs, foremothers, they've already left us their testimonies. And that's what we're reviewing here, the documents, the scriptures. You know what I'm saying? But he says, aren't you like the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Now, some misled brothers and sisters out there who do recognize that they're Hebrews and they're Israelites, they say, well, this had nothing to do with the Ethiopians. It's just to say that they're black. 
Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Remind me of what Paul says again, seeking to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of the King of Kings and his Christ. But John expects better of I and I, brothers and sisters. So once again, more to come. Shalom, Rastafari, for now and for more information, links or contacts, one can um, go to our website, www.lojsociety.org, and um, if, one, if, if one is willing to volunteer or donate or has certain special skills or whatever, please let us know and be patient with us because the harvest is, the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. So we're really looking for our brothers and sisters, the co-laborers, and what task in this ministry to delegate, you understand, to ones who can be entrusted and responsible, you know what I'm saying, in those tasks. Because in my father's house, there are many mansions, if it was not so. Our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua, would not have told you, and I would not tell you either, you know what I'm saying, but I have faith in our black Lord and Savior to the glory of our father, Abu Kadus, Moran Bessazem, Negeri Yehuda, Kadamawi, Hala Selassie, Siyume, Giziari, Her, Negusa, Negest, Ze, Echopia. Shalom.